Welcome to my first episode of Get to Know. Today I'm teaching with Paul Weekly. Introduce yourself. Paul Weekly. <laughs> I'm Paul Weekly and I'm a tattoo artist. Okay. Just a tattoo artist. A lot more. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm known for. Nobody knows that you're a father. I was say nobody. But on your Instagram, nobody knows. Mm. 50 50. Pretty sure. Because everybody knows that I have a family, that I'm not married, I'm not married. You, you hide with me. Yes. Is there anything to that? Yeah. Actually, yeah. So, personal, especially Instagram, business for me, that, that's what it is. I try to portray a lifestyle outside of my family and I don't want to like to, to, to collide with what I can say. So I kind of want to protect my family. I don't need to be posting everything. Oh, I love my wife, I love my parents, I love myself. That's for, for that family moment. I don't need to put my life that I live on Instagram. Okay. So why not have two Instagrams? One is private and one is public. Because sometimes your people need to actually live in the moment. Like they don't need to know what me and my family have for breakfast or what holiday we went to. You know, like we, we need to actually live it. Okay. So. First deep question. Is being a tattoo artist always what you want to be? Absolutely not. Um, for the people that actually know me, so I'm talking like 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 way back, like people that I don't even connect with now would look at me like how on earth did that happen? Because from small I literally was born a cricket song. That was that was my life. My life was gonna be I'm playing professional cricket for South Africa. That's all I ever envisioned, in and that's what my dream. And then, then high school happened. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's 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 two factors. So I went to a public school. Obviously, unfortunate that the curriculums didn't provide a sporting structure for me. So you kind of get torn in. Well, I shouldn't say get torn or caught up, but without that being part of my life anymore. It's things like girls, friends, so you, you kind of develop different habits. And I wouldn't want to say that, oh, that's the only reason I didn't make it. I could have, for myself, chosen to go out and continue playing. And yeah, so I don't want to blame anything or say, oh, this is the reason why and have that broken record. I was also responsible a lot for creating my own destiny. Okay. So high school missed you up. Yeah, I feel I feel and girls. <laughs> Mostly girls, yeah. <laughs> so would you say your wife saved you? In a sense where you didn't get distracted. Two thousand million and hundred and fifty percent. Okay. <laughs> okay. And as you grew up, what was your, one of your biggest struggles like going forward in life, in your career? Um, so growing up was always different. Um, back then it seemed like a struggle because what I wore, the things I liked, was, was a lot different to what my normal colored community was doing. So I was always out there. I wasn't, I wasn't held down by, oh, you're colored, you must dress a certain way. Oh, you like this, you need to do this type of thing. Um, I was always very open. So I was always an open-minded person. I liked different things. I was very um, different in how I thought. So. A big part of my struggles was trying to fit in, but at the same time, be myself, which is just kind of a hard thing to do. Don't mind. Especially being a teenager in a community yeah. where you already stand out number one because nobody knows what place you are in a colored community. And you're like, wait, no, you're white, but then there's, there's that thing about it. So it's, it's pretty tough. And then also, I won't lie to you, the, I can't say poverty because you weren't like, poor. But you were okay. But yeah, like we lived, we ate to do this. If I call it a struggle, I just say that the opportunities weren't as many as perhaps somebody else who's getting a, a better lifestyle could have had. Or more money. Yeah. More money, yeah. yes. Okay. And you think that held you back as well? Yeah. So I'll touch base on a, on a little story that I don't tell a lot of people. So what happened is. Um, I must have been about 10 years old, 10, 11, around about there. And I was already very good at what I do. Everybody knew me. And what happened was, 
our church was having, we literally had church at the wall of the, of the school. I think it was getting correct. Very certain now. And what happened is the coach there was was busy bowling to a youngster in the net. So obviously went to the school. So me being forward as I am, I ran to hey listen, can I bowl to him? And then I did this and the guy's like, wait now, what is going on here? And he was obviously impressed by me. So like listen, please come back, get your parents to you sign this paper, whatever, all of this. I want you to come to the school. So I'm like, okay. In my mind, I already knew but my parents cannot afford this. I'm paying it no money. So I thought that what I was doing, like saying, I, I can't come to the school because I can't afford it, was actually what's known as scholarships or bursaries. And I had no idea about it, so I paid no money. And when I look back, I'm like, wait, no, I actually did have the opportunity, but because I, I assumed no. that financial status wasn't, wasn't the best, that, that was it. So I had already made that first, if I can call it a mistake, by assuming things, yeah. But also, don't you think living in a gated community, a small community, you didn't know anything better to, like you weren't taught about scholarships and you didn't know about um, yeah, that, that's that's exactly it. That that is exactly it because like we just assume okay to go there obviously it's a lot of money for one hour getting to school. So all these different things play play played a big part in yeah. yeah. And as a kid you were told you can't afford, I don't have, so it plays on the But it does, it does. Like you don't want to stress a kid in my house. Yeah. Um and in your background, like being a kid, were you very artistic? Always. Always. Always, like from, from as far back as I can remember. It wasn't, as I said, cricket was number one, yeah. but I could do everything else. So I wasn't, I wasn't, it was serious. It's, it's, just, it's just the way the way I was. And then I liked doing a lot of things. And when I came to art, it was one of those things that, oh, everyone can draw in school. So we're all sitting and we're drawing from coloring books and everything, and we're copying and copying and back and forth and back and forth. But it wasn't something that, that I was really good at until about the age of 11 and 12. That's when it started like, blossoming. And were you ever recognized for your artistic Like um, in school, were you always told to be different from maybe another student? So, I won't even lie, not really. There must have been about four or five other kids who I assumed were even better than what I was. Um, I just had the ability to do a lot more. So maybe one kid was good at drawing from a picture. And the other kid was maybe would have colored it in something. I was able to do all of them. So maybe I wasn't as good as what they did, but then I just was able to do a lot. So the more I practiced, the better I got. So in, in school at a, at, a, at a young age, probably like primary school now, that's where it was kind of like the spark started. And then from there, it went out. So from, from the, like, like my, big, my beginning stages of art, nah. No, no, I won't, I won't even put myself anywhere near being good. Okay, <laughs> but now you, you're like, I'm that game, I'm good, I'm perfect. I, I wouldn't say perfect. Close to it. I'm good. Even that one's hard because I'm so hard on myself. Like, listen, I can look at something I did and pick out every single flaw. So, so I think that's what, what made me look better. Okay. You, able, you are able to take this from yourself uh, and others. Yeah, that's... Okay. So, what happened is, the reason I have this way of thinking is my father was was, was very hard on me. Like, like, I wouldn't say like tremendously harsh, but he always would instill that if you bring something, it must be done right. And what he would do is like, I'd draw a picture and he'd say to me, oh cool, but the nose is crooked. Oh, no, that's nice, but what about the eyes? Why do you like that? And then I would look, I'd go back in my room, he said this is crooked, he said this is crooked. It never ever once thought of me that, oh, why is my father not saying that my work is good? It always was, he showed me something wrong, so I perfected it. And then I didn't ever take it as, oh, my father doesn't love me. How can he say that he's doing this? It always, it didn't even, I don't even say, he even registered in my mind that, that he was criticizing, he was saying, hey, this is wrong, try it again. And he always said the word is like self-praise has no recommendation. So I was like, self 
things with no recommendation. Like, yeah. You telling yourself you're good, it's not as good as somebody actually saying, you know what, you're actually good. So if you go out saying, oh, I'm good, and someone else looks at you and says, okay, that's actually shit. Now you thought you up here, I mean, this person put you down here, whereas for me, I'm like, okay, let's see what this person thinks of it. And then they're like, wow, this is so tremendous. And I'm like, okay, it wasn't that great. So the level of, of disappointment is a lot lower for me. Oh, okay. Because you're used to it. I'm, I'm used to it. And would you say it's the same like that with yourself? Um, I think it might even be a little bit harder on him. <sighs> it's, it's just that I don't want him to, to, to go down the same road that I did with him this time. Because as much as it's like, as I said to my father, was, was hard on me, as a child, I would think that. Oh, my parents are so hard on me. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? And then later on in life, you realize, damn, maybe they could have actually been a lot harder on me. I would have been a little bit more successful. And then I don't want to do that. At the same time, it's like, I also don't want to want to stop his personality. The same. What I did, that's the way you must do it. Whereas he needs to also grow on his own. Yeah. Yeah. And I do not force water. Oh. That's the one thing. You don't force. I don't. Unfortunately. You don't She's, she's got her own personality. She's like the, the most, I don't know, strong-headed person I've ever had to even deal with in my life. And this is a five-year-old. So you can't criticize her. <laughs> she'll she's, tell you something. Oh yeah, she's, she's, okay. she's, a, she's a different thing. And um, in a sense of with your wife, obviously you can't criticize her. But to make herself better, how do you encourage her? To be honest, she's your partner. So, my, this is now my personal opinion yeah. on, on, okay, are we talking about on the relationship side of it? No. In, or, or in terms of encouraging her or... Obviously your wife needs, she, she represents you basically. Yeah. So, she's going out, she knows, you should know as poor with you, but, but also she is herself. So how do you encourage her to be herself? Ooh, and that, 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 honest, honestly speaking, that's something you, wow, wow, you hit, you hit like the nail, like dead on, like, like you hit it straight through the fucking wood. So here's the thing, going out, regardless, let's say we just went to the mall, people stop. Oh, you must be Paul Wheatley, but, and she's like, I'm sorry, I have a name. Yeah. But I'm not Paul Wheatley's wife, so everyone assumes that that's, so that, I think it's got to a point where it pisses her off of it. But that doesn't bother her if I can say too too much because she'll just make a joke out of something. Like that. Yeah. It can get can get a bit hectic, um, but she'll always be known as poor you know, so listen, I was in there spoke before you. I all these people carry on like they don't know me. So so that's it. Um, it's, the, it's it's the little bit of pain, if I can say that, of, of just dealing with a lot of people. So everyone will know my name. And I don't think she needs much encouraging if I can say, because for me, when I look at her, she's like literally the polar opposite to me. Whereas I'm the one who's more, if I can say, I'm not really focused too much on on looks or, or making sure my hair is a certain way. Yeah, we all do have moments, but with her, she's literally nat naturally something that everyone lays their eyes on. Like you, you cannot miss her income. And I don't think I really need to 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 take away from all four weeks wife because she doesn't even have to say anything and still be who she is. Does she feel the same way? I'm not sure. So it's 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 a tough one because I try and I try not and then I say maybe I'm looking at this and maybe no, maybe the few things I need to change in my life. Um so I, I won't even lie to you, it's not something that, that, that plays in my mind but Oh, you've got to get your wife's confidence up. I think it's something that that people need to do on their own. Like she doesn't need me to, to make her confidence. I think we all we all have to be our own people. And my confidence in myself and her confidence in herself is going to come together and then we're going to help each other. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's like saying that, oh, the reason I'm not happy is because you did something. You, you, can't, you can't hold your happiness or unhappiness on account of someone else is doing so. You responsible. If you are upset or you unhappy, you unhappy. You make yourself unhappy. You can't blame somebody else. And it's something that that I think we both actually learn. So there's a lot of times that I'll be like, oh, the reason I'm not busy was you said this or you said that, and you're not like, no, you stick back. 
And I tell you, I would say to you, like, listen, I, I can't be the reason that you're unhappy. Maybe you were sad about something else. And then we start talking and you start learning, I think you're part of a lot better, just sitting down and talking. And is um, she okay with me seeing more than <laughs> what she's supposed okay, to? Okay, so my, my question, for, my answer to everyone is, if literally every female who gets accepted by me will ask me, oh, then your wife's okay like, with all of this. And my answer is normally, she works with me, she's seen what it's like from the beginning. And as much as that's been said, on a personal level, I don't actually. And I actually did ask her, like, you know, tell me something, like, are you actually okay with it? And I think just everybody has a, as a person who is, who is with someone, who has somebody in their life in terms of like a relationship or spouse. Um, I think I think it will miss it will miss with you. So as much as she is very much understanding about it, I'm not gonna be naive and say, that nah, doesn't bother, oh she's fine with it. She, everybody has that. It's like for example if she was, let's say she was a masseuse or something and the whole of guys are coming in I think it's, it's that, so everybody will have that, that somewhat bit of jealousy or, or that, little, that little thing that, that worries you at the back of your mind. And yeah, it's, I, I can't honestly say to you that no, she's completely fine because I don't think, I don't think anyone would be in, in, in the line of work that I think. So. Family. What was the best phase in your life? From the time you were married to now. Okay, so if there was one before then maybe <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can't I can't justify the yeah, question with the answer like to say, oh this is the best moment, this is the best moment. So what happens is for me likewise when people say, oh, what's the best tattoo you've ever done? It's like I don't have one because Maybe yesterday was the best day of my life. Like next week is going to be something even better is going to happen. So in terms of my family, like obviously the birth of my son, being married, birth of my daughter, all these things play. Like I think that the, the highlight of my life is literally meeting my wife. And not, not a lot of people understand the story. A few, a few do, but there's, there's a big backstory on how we actually met. And from then to where we are now, it's I think that in itself is like wow. When you look back, it's like damn, like that, that we went through that, like that, that's pretty damn amazing. So that in itself is like a big, a big plus in my life. You are. Yeah. Like listen, you know. I was hoping for that answer. No, no, you you know you know the type of person I am. I can be here to give you since before. Hey, listen, there's a party tonight or something. We're going to do this, but I I'm like yeah, let's do it. And then I go and I'm like, you know you gotta pick your daughter, you know you gotta do this, you know these things in life. Is. So she's literally like my backbone, if I can say that. Oh, by the way, please stop me every time I say this word like. Because I keep saying like and stuff. Like, oh, you're going, you're going to do an interview today, I'm going to say like, like, like all the time. Yeah, see, and there again, that, that's the person. So in the back of my mind, she's always there. Yeah, otherwise I'd be a very erratic person. So she helps me along the way. Yeah, she should. And you should as well. How do you help her? No, no. Honestly, um, would she say the same? Yeah, <laughs> she, she even she she won't even disagree with it. And but then again, it comes to what type of help are we talking? So a lot of a lot of the time, it's little things that we disregard. In that. So it's something I am working on, but at the same time, I'm very guilty of pushing it to the to the wayside. So what happens is in my family dynamic, okay. My wife's not working, she stays at home, she looks up the kids, she basically runs her house. I make uh, I make work making money. So that's my end of it, okay? So what happens is everyone assumes, oh, Paul's the man of the house. He doesn't have to come home and wash the dishes, he doesn't have to come home and put the kids to sleep, he doesn't have to come home and do all these things that people in the family should actually do. So what happens is that for me personally, I'll come home, first thing I do. I literally jump and look at my phone. 
but I've just literally got home, sat down on the couch, I didn't bother saying, hey, how was your day? What did you get up to? My daughter's will come running. Oh, Dad, read this book. I'm like, wait, I'm doing all the time. I just came back from work. And I look at it a lot. And even recently, there's some dad you asked me to do this interview. Like recently, I found myself actually having out of body experiences where I'm there and I'm doing it. And I realize, like, wait, no, that's actually pretty insensitive of me. Always in the bathroom, my clothes are laying on the floor because I just decided to take them all out have a shower, leave them there. And it's, it's, it's the little things that us as guys do that I think because we think, oh, but I'm the one who pays the rent in this house. I'm the one who does this when I come and make big food and stuff, which is actually pretty insensitive because I try to do that. When you tell me I can't get past the dishes, like, that's, that's it. You're going to ask me to do washing, like, and washing is like, yo, that's incredible. I'm going to sweet for me. But uh, you're pretty involved in your daughter's lives. You're not uh, working for her and just paying for this whole deal to be involved. I could, I could actually be a little bit more involved, but, but yeah, I am like when it comes to the rugby matches. Okay, obviously now with COVID, I can see all, all gone. But I try my best to, to make time for that. And unfortunately, my hours like working, it is a bit hectic, so drop them off at school. I'm not going to see them again for the rest of the day, come home. Sometimes I get home, but like, like, my time is a bit, a bit flexible, so at least I'm fortunate with that. But sometimes I'm coming home at 10, 11 o'clock at night, which is, you, you, do, you do miss out on, on quite a few things. It's like that, that one, because what happens is not, not being there for so long, and then let's say, for example, for the whole week, I'm coming home at 7 o'clock at night, and then next week I'm coming home at 4 o'clock, I've now clashed with their routine. So they're used to doing something without me and then it's like, wait now, I'm here, so everything should change, which is then you see, wait now, like a few moments in life literally adds up to a whole lot when you actually look at it like from that point of view. And because you notice all these things, have you made an effort to change? I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'll be a hypocrite and say, oh, I've changed, I'm the best person in the world. But I heard someone told me once that if I ask your children the family dynamic, they'll tell me the truth, not you. So it's, it's something more when you actually think about it, it's like yeah, so me me talking to you and telling you how wonderful I am and oh how great I am as a father, did you bother asking my children and then you're gonna then you're gonna see the real truth. Yeah. Um what makes you feel accomplished in that? That's a tough one for me because I don't feel accomplished in that at the moment in terms of of where, where my potential lies, or where I could be. But then again, I was thinking on a monetary basis, and I realized that it's, that's, that's actually not the best thing life. So where I am right now in terms of family, like at this very moment, I'm talking in the last two week period, something shifted, and I'm like, wait, my life is too fucking short to, <laughs> but yeah, life is too short to, to actually concern yourself with monetary value. So for me right now, I think I'm actually in a good space in terms of the people I have behind me, like the family. I'm blessed to have in-laws that are literally like my other parents. Like I can't even say to you that I hold them in a lower regard to compare to my mother and father. Like they are literally equal because they love me with the same amount that my parents would. So Wherever they, there's a problem or if there's something that arises, they're the first ones to have a back. So for me, that's very important. And you have a sibling, okay? Yeah. You know what it's like. Just having another sibling around, this fight's this beginning. There's, there's a whole lot of petty things I could say. And I come from a family of, I have four other siblings. So that in itself is like, feels like ridiculous. And there's a lot of things that go on. Oh, this one wants that and this one doesn't. So we all got our different personalities in the clash. And we sometimes forget that at the end of the day, we're actually family now. Although we're beating with our own children and stuff, we still need to keep a good family dynamic so that everyone's on the same page. What will happen is I'll go to one sister and complain about this one, she'll go to the other one and complain. And then what happens is everybody gets lost in translation. So then we, we all end up just becoming winners. Why not all sit together, talk a little bit? And if you're speaking the truth about somebody else, then there's no room for any any harsh feelings because 
I said it, it was the truth, and I can tell you in your face because it's the truth, it's not a lie. Yeah. I'm gonna say, oh, damn, that was a bit. So, yeah, it's just that whole family dynamic is something that, that I've learned that is actually the most important thing in life. So, I'll give you an example. I love learning things. From small, I want to be a fighter pilot, like just watching TV and stuff, oh, do this. I will not be able to learn, first of all, I don't know maths, so I'm not getting up in the air. <laughs> but, Lamborghini is the closest thing to a fighter jet that I'm ever going to jump in, and I want one. But you, you don't understand how much I want one. I but do I actually want one for me, or do I want one for you to see how cool the Lamborghini is? Mm. And then it's like, wait, well, yeah. maybe I can just kind of hope for the Lamborghini money, or work towards it, and go jump in somebody else's over there. That's what they're going to put on a race track, whereas I'm going to have a Lamborghini, Guaranteed in the first week, that thing will lose its its appeal. You know, the first five days, so we'll be driving and now we've driven it and now we own it and now have to pay for it. And then it's like a normal car to me because what we hold so valuable to us is only a dream. Because what happens once we actually attain it, then it means nothing. Because likewise, it goes back to even the family that I make talk about. My wife, as beautiful as she is, I saw her, I did everything that I can to be with her and I don't appreciate her as much as when I first tried to get with her because now I was like, oh, I'm with you, like, okay, why? And you look back and it's like, oh, that's actually how I should have been thinking. So you don't get the competition? Not today. Um, where do you see yourself? Short. Yeah, it's okay, so but it's right now, so I haven't I haven't I, I try I try my best not to look at, at the future too much. So what happens is I don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. So obviously we do all have our aspirations, but with me right now, my I'd say my goal for the next five years is just to be established in my career. And when I say established it's, it's, it's okay being being good famous, so to say. Like everyone knows me, but being famous doesn't pay the bills. So I actually want I want to be in a place where I do not have to tattoo every day of my life. I want to be able to to have other avenues of 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 exploring my creativity, whether it be on the fashion side or just on my art side. Uh, but there's so there's so many different things that I do, as I said to you, that there's so the possibilities for me are endless. But right now, it's just about okay. we look looking at where am I actually going to stop? So for me, right now, the tattooing, as you know, that's yeah. that's my main form of, of what I do, and, and in terms of my career. But yeah, there are some other avenues that, that I want to explore. So. It's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a tough one to say, okay, I know exactly what we want to be in five years because I don't want to set a time limit because if I reach it in five years and you come back and you say, hey, Paul, how did you do? And then I'm still not there, then it's going to look like, like I didn't succeed. But I don't think success should be should be, should be be managing time. I think it's, it's when you actually do it, then it's done. So I don't think you should put a time limit on anything. Um. You don't know five years time, maybe it'll be in two years' time. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. You have to speak it out into the universe. Um, would you describe your job obviously tattooing as an outlet for you as a healing experience for your clients or for yourself? Okay, so what I do artistically, 20% of what goes into my tattoo. That's something that I learned, it's a skill called I put it on people. 80% of what I do is literally a trade of images. So people will come, regardless of, of, of their lifestyle, their background, even if they came and they just wanted something small, what I put out when, when I tattoo is like, maybe for instance, I'm doing, I'm literally doing a little smiley face on somebody. The same amount of energy that I would put into a five hour piece goes into even that little 10 minute piece because I'm so passionate about what I do that I will do the best that I can all the time. So I never want to I never want to, to do some something, take somebody's money and say, hey listen, pay me, okay, I'm gonna do this, that's okay, bye. 
I'd rather not be paid and not do the tattoo if, if I'm not in the right state of mind, number one, than to just do something that has my name on it and somebody down the street will say, who did it? And say, Paul, and like, Paul did that? And that, that's number one, let us say, in terms of energy. And then other people sitting there, obviously they, they came in, they didn't really understand how it work. And they come in, they sit in the chair, and then they like, say, wait, no. Okay, this is not what I expected from a tattoo. Everyone expects, expects like, okay, I'm gonna walk into this tattoo studio, it's gonna be loud music playing, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be dark and there's skulls everywhere. No, like, I'm an artist, I'm not I'm not a how do I say I'm not bound to the tattoo society of the old age. Um, it's it's out there now, it's like there's a lot of tattoo studios that don't even do piercing or anything, which was the connotation of oh if you have a tattoo studio, it must be all these things. We are literally a different breed of artists these days and with me talking to my clients and, and, and just, just wondering with them on a personal level, that's probably the reason that most people actually come to me, besides just the tattoos. It's just for the conversation and and just the the feel of, of, of what it is to sit in the chair, be tattooed and just be able to talk to someone. I don't know for some reason, maybe it's like, like being a barber, like people sit there and everything comes out. So they they literally just therapy. So sense of thing for both of you guys. Yeah. Client and you. Not a sense of Listen, some some people some people some people of this So I'm a very very susceptible to a lot of negative energy. And when I say susceptible to the negative energy, I'm meaning because I am so so vibrant and I give off this whatever light if you want to call it what happens is i can pick up other people's negative energy like a lot what will happen is that stuff at the end of the day will be so heavy on me that i literally need to cleanse myself or, or do something because i can literally feel it sit on me so as much as i've cured them some people listen some people come in and sit and then i'm talking to them and like, wow like i needed this more than you but most of the time it's like when you when you're dealing with people on that level and you, you're just entertaining their stories, you're taking some of their energy and carrying it on to you. And that's my problem. Like I could watch a YouTube video and I feel that thing. So I have to even watch what I watch what I or watch basically because all these things that, that literally stays in the back of my mind and overthink and overthink and overthink. So it actually does what it is. I had to learn a few little tricks of the trade on how to actually cleanse my, my own spirit. And then, would you encourage the kids to follow your career path? Yes. But on a, if they were to say to me, Dad, I want to become a tattoo artist, by all means, but I push you in that direction. Especially now, it's like, tattooing now is, is one of the, the biggest forms of art which actually pays you now as, as opposed to being, let's say, a fine artist where you're painting these canvases and then you only get recognized when you die, then your paintings will be sold for $10 million. Whereas, like with tattooing now, you can make a, a decent career. I'm talking, I know people who are driving at all the voices of being tattoo artists. And there is a big career um, avenue for them in doing it, but I'd never ever keep them to just doing one thing. When, when, you, when you're really passionate about something in, in life, I think you need to, to go. Even if, even if you're unsuccessful at it in the beginning, when you do something that you actually do now, you put your heart and soul into it, therefore it will be unsuccessful. And then, uh, so we've spoken a lot about your future and what you're going to do. We spoke about it now, about yeah. future. I mean, before we started. So, what is the plan for the future? Okay. For Four weekly and gallery. Yes. Okay, so obviously with, with it, everyone, like what I actually started with my friend Sergio and I, before tattooing even came. Tattooing is like a tattooing found me if I can say. So what happened is we were literally painting on t-shirts. We would do jeans, jackets, sneakers, caps, like anything that I could customize, I would customize it. What happened is I was born at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at me. So literally, 
everything you see now on Instagram, you've got these youngsters doing all these thrifting things up there. They'll take a denim jacket and they'll put this painting on it. I've been doing this like 15 years ago. And for me to say, oh, I did it first, like all these people coming out, they don't know. Like, no, for me, it's actually great to see that what I started back then is actually available for kids to do now. And I shouldn't even say kids, because there's still some people who carried on from that time and are, are just pushing through and pushing through and, and breaking boundaries. Yeah. Up. And everybody wants something custom, because as much as we live in a society where we follow everybody, we still want to be unique to ourselves. Maybe, for example, you like, something that somebody else won't like so you want that particular idea on your garment that you're going to wear whereas somebody else will want something different so you go into the shop you can only find something that's for everybody yeah whereas you want something that's for you so i just want to want to get back into into that side of things in terms of customizing the clothing basically anything i get my hands on it doesn't for me i don't i don't stop at at one specific thing i, I like the diversity of everything so as much as I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades it's like the biggest problem i do face with that is actually following through because sometimes you'll be so lost you're doing so many different things that nothing actually just reaches like an end goal so that's something that i'm working towards but yeah for the future like like near future the clothing industry that's 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 where i'm headed that's that's literally and social media wise social media sorry <laughs> Social social media, like it's it's a bit of a tough one for me because as much as I'm on my phone all the time, it's hard for me to actually sit down and follow hashtags and you gotta post this thing at this certain stage, you've got to have this so-called aesthetic which which is confusing to me. I just thought like if I like something and I post it and maybe somebody else will like it and a lot of the times on social media what I do is I try and put things out there for people to actually like. Whereas I should actually be putting things that I like and the same people who are in the same frame of mind, if they like it, then I should be happy with that. So me chasing 10,000 likes but everyone just saw a picture of Paul Ridley and liked it. For example, Justin Bieber can put a picture of a blue dot on Instagram. There'll be like, all the likes in the world will go there, right? But it's a blue dot. Yeah. I post the blue dot and I have to post about like, the best thing ever that I thought was wow nothing in life is going to be better than this and two people will like it so it's it's finding the difference between social media likes and people who actually genuinely like it so that's that's where my struggle is but wouldn't you see social media as the future best thing ever okay. best thing ever but when you're stuck in social media it can become a lie so what happens is so many people that they they become blinded by, by the reality that they assume that when it was on social media, that that's the only life. So what happens is, the only problem I feel with, with social media is that people assume that they own your time. So what happens is, because, let's say for example WhatsApp, because they have my number and they thought of a tattoo, at that specific moment, their tattoo is the most important thing in the world. Maybe I'm, as you say, I'm at home, playing with my son, they click it in the backyard, they expect me to answer that phone when they send that message. So a lot of people that they take it, likewise with Instagram, like, oh, Caitlin hasn't posted for two weeks, unfollow, nothing there I can see. And it becomes that, so you have to watch what you're posting yeah. it. So you kind of have to keep up with the lifestyle to please other people. And that, that for me, it's, 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 it's really hard. So as much as it, it's the greatest thing for business and and for bringing the world closer to everybody. It's also becoming the worst thing for society in reality. But if it was used in, um, in a form where it was used for good, would you say you'd go into it? Yeah, listen, like, at the moment, I think what it is useful is predominantly for good. It's like, I don't think so. <sighs> why not? Because it's, like you said, it's a, it's a persona that people have placed on their social media, this is how I am, where personally I post everything. I don't post just what I want, yeah. <laughs> I post everything. So, in a sense, I feel like I use it in a good way, yeah. and other people, like cyber bullies, or, you know, people that have more money will post their Dior bag and whatever, and put you down because 
<laughs> there are only follow people that post the old bags, you understand? That's so it's not, not in a good way, that way. So, so that funny you talk about cyberbullying. I don't understand what the hell is cyberbullying. I don't understand it. And, but I'm a, I'm a guy. Yeah. Soccer is part of my life. And watching the games, I'm like, oh, we need to stop the cyberbullying because people are posting that. Like, Wait now. So you're telling me someone sitting behind their phone and literally talking so much shit about somebody else but maybe their life's not in order. So what happens is, I if I see something, for example, you posted your picture of your bag, and I didn't like it, so it's, you know, huh, it's probably fake. She doesn't wear the three things, she can afford it. Probably is it using OnlyFans money. But, and there's so many negative things I can say, whereas I'm like, okay, if I've got any negative things to say, I'm just gonna walk away. Because that's only gonna incite somebody else saying, oh, who are you to tell her? You sitting minding your own business and there were 17 of us having an argument over your bed, which you didn't mean no more, you just like, you like it. And that's all that should matter. And yeah. I think also people people who post stuff on social media, it's also their responsibility to understand that other people are going to comment because they have now given somebody an avenue to judge your life. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to be harsh and say, Listen, you posted it, so you must deal with it. I'm going to say, you also need to take some sort of responsibility and, and guard yourself when, when you're posting certain things because there are going to be people in the world who don't have the balls enough to tell you something in your face so they can be hide behind social media because they know that's on the other side of the world. I'll never see you again, so I can talk as much crap as I want to. And it actually does hurt people. If somebody posted something on my social media and said, boy, the tattoo the shit, that would be the worst tattoo artist ever. I'm not going to say, that's not going to bother me, I know myself as much as I know myself in a normal world. That, that will hurt you because at the end of the day, I'm still a human being trying to be accepted in a society where I think everyone's fighting for acceptance and we all assume that what the next person is doing is what we should be doing and we forget to live our own lives because what happens is a lot of people, every person, we want what we want and we expect you to want that same thing. So we want to see Caitlin like this, but we don't want to see ourselves like that. We want this for ourselves. So we want what's best for you and for us at the same time, which is actually unfair. Yeah. You should you should be happy doing what's good for Caitlin and I should be happy doing what's good for Paul. I'm never gonna to say to you, oh, I don't like what you're doing with this thing. You should actually do something. You know, because that's what I want. Are you sure you haven't said that to me before? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay, there's a quote that I live by daily because um, I moved here about 10 years ago. The sole difference because I was staying in a small town. So, and I also grew up where if something bothers you, speak. Like, don't say something just to keep that person happy. If you don't like them, stay away. If you don't like something, they don't say it. So, the quote is originality can only arise when you are connected to yourself. It is an act of honesty. Would you say that yourself is yourself? Or do you also have a persona of I think I was saying persona. Um, it's like so what happens is I always tease my wife in terms of me being a comedian. So what happened is I can I'm, I'm blessed with the ability to adapt to any situation. Um, but I can also say that I'm 100% honest with who I am. Yeah. So what you take of the little bits of me that I gave you, that's on you. So I'm not responsible for what you think of me. So I'm true to myself, but I'm also I'm also open to everybody else. Are you yourself? Your original self? I am, but as I said, there's, there's, there's many Okay, let me put spot. it in this way. So if I were to go to maybe a family friend, you know how people like to gossip, awesome. and be like, hey, I was by Paul and blah, 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 and they're like, hey, don't you think he's false? Would you agree with that? No. So no. you are open, honest, day in, day out. I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to think so. If, and when, when you say honestly in, in terms of being honest with myself and who I am, I don't think I don't think you're going to somebody 
is gonna is gonna change or uh, they have the same opinion of me probably that you do. Yeah. Now I see you as yourself, like that's so the inspiration behind yeah, this is you. Yeah. Feel special. <laughs> <laughs> but um so you don't find many people that they are themselves in matters. Or in case of yourself. So it's, 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 a, it's a hard thing to actually be yourself because a lot of people hide behind. When I, when I say this, I don't, I don't mean it harshly, but a lot of people hide behind lies yeah. to please other people. And it's something that and I'm not going to lie. Like I, yeah. I, I, I used to be that person. Like ask anybody. The one thing I think that's my flaw is wanting to please everybody and then I think that's what everybody will tell you about is ah oh, Paul he said promise me this thing and it's all me so what happens is because of my ability or, or my lack thereof of saying no I end up promising people things that are comfortable listen it's something like recently that, that I've worked on and it's actually done myself good as much as maybe some people don't like that, that, that attitude I'm fine because it's not something I'm being as a true to myself. I'm not. I'm not trying to please anybody. I told you the truth, so you respect me more. But also in today's age, so maybe this is the reason most people are not themselves because they're not praised for being themselves, but they're praised for being this girl that posts maybe all the tattoos or this girl that posts all the designer bags. So they're not praised for being themselves. A lot of the time. It's like, if you go to, let's say, a psychiatrist now, mm-hmm. they'll tell you that the majority of 13 to 30 year olds suffer with anxiety or depression, some form of mental disability yeah. or mental, mental or what, what you impairment, yeah. if I can say that, because literally because of social standards. And my, I was having this conversation with somebody, we were talking about the difference between Tupac and let's say, uh, that happened now to spend this yeah. okay? Tupac did it without Instagram, okay? There were like five, six rappers who were the big deals at that time, who were big. There were probably a lot more, but they were not exposed. Right now we have so many, so much information, so many things that you, if you go onto your Spotify and type in a random word, you'll probably see so many different songs and how many different artists and everything because there's so much to that that you can you can explore and I think that's actually the problem is that because we've got so much information, our brains can't comprehend it's like we're dealing with too much, therefore we, we want to also give too much. So what we put out on social media, you maybe you maybe liked it, right? And you expect to get let's say a thousand likes on it, but you only got a hundred and then you now and am I not good enough? Like last time when I posted something, there were so many likes now I posted and there's such a, a few likes and then that level of anxiety will lead to the depression and it will lead to so a lot of other things and I think that's why the group today struggles because they aren't allowed to be themselves. And it's it's not I'm not gonna say oh back in my day or back in my parents' days it was different because I think it's just more open you just hear people's stories a lot more because of social media than before because i can guarantee you i grew up in a household where as a kid we got hit but if you did something wrong that was a punishment you got hit i cannot hit my children now well, I'm, not, I'm not going to say that i don't like i still you know i'm a little bit hard on them but but not incredible but the same thing goes like what my father tried to teach me was him trying to instill his own personal value in me, which is not it's not the worst thing, but also it does stop people's own personalities. So as much as I'm saying you need to do this, you need to conform to society, conform, 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 we also stop in people's personalities. So I'll give an example. My daughter got a report card back from school. All normal things is cool. She's my daughter, so she struggles with left and right. I'm not gonna lie, I was me. So if I tend to be like, you know, it's like, yeah, okay. Little bit. Okay, everything else is more good than bad. She battles to perform in group, but doesn't battle socially. In a group socially, she's on top. 
working with other people, she's done that. So is it the worst thing? Or do we say to her, no, you need to learn to work with other people? Or do you say, hey, wait now, here's someone who is good social, but doesn't really adapt with other people working because maybe number one, she doesn't agree with so many things. It's like, do we say to this child, you need to learn to conform because the only way in society is going to learn is to work in groups, you can't do everything by yourself, but at the same time, you get told that you need to do things on your own because she struggles a little bit with her fine motor skills in terms of cutting out other things. So if it's such a hard one, because I looked at this thing, like, wow, conform, conform, conform. Is it good or is it bad? Because it's something I was struggling with also. Like, and then I look at things and like, all we're trying to do is live our own lives and be the people who we are. But unfortunately, we still have to conform to the values that society puts out for us. For your parents? Oh, your parents. I did it with my son and I had to stop instantly. I said, as you know, I was telling you in the interview earlier, I thought I was going to be the next drug to My son goes to Melkestan because that's his full John Tiro to So I tried to live by Harris to do it. I'm like, no, you're going to do the things I didn't do. And I'm like, oh, now this child's out here being a rugby superstar. I didn't even play rugby before. So what I sent him there for wasn't actually for him in the beginning until I had to step back and say, you know what? You choose what you want to do. There are some, some things where I take parental control over and I say, listen, I'm forcing him or just nudging him in that direction. And if it's worrying that he doesn't want to do it, then I'll step away. But most of the time, I allow them to just be free, but I won't say that it's something that I just do do naturally. I had to sit back and say, oh, I have to look at myself first, and then to come back into the and try to make a few changes. And, and it's, it's hard because, again, being a parent, number one, is so hard. Being a young parent is even harder because he is dealing with my dad's not cool, first, everybody, that's my age thinks my dad is cool because he does tattoos and he does all these things that so it's that you're never gonna be the cool parent to your kids. You're gonna be their parent. So as much as, as that's gonna be there, I think we still need to 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 address those issues of being a parent for the for your child rather than being a friend to your child. Yeah. The big question, what is the most common assumption people have about you. Let me just say, a lot of people when I talk to them and say, oh I did my tattoo by Paul, blah, blah, blah. is he married? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's married. So what is the most common? Okay, so first rule, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wedding ring off there. Okay? I'm going to put my gloves on and put my wedding ring over my gloves so maybe they can see. Maybe the gloves are a bit more blocky. Yeah. Okay. You see, that's my wedding ring, yeah. it's always on my fingers. It's not something I hide, it's not something that, that I intentionally don't put out there. It's just that when you came to see me, did you come to find out from my personal life or did you come to get tattooed? Okay? Yeah. So that, that's just just, that's just like your first meeting basically. Okay? And then again, did you come to get a tattoo or did you come to find love? So so that's a it's a it's a it's a tricky one because being in the social aspect, uh, having a social career, that, that in itself steps on certain boundaries that I think that it confuses people, okay? I'll give an example. A lady was to sit here and take a photo in front of me. It's awkward because what happens is, this is an intimate thing that you normally associate with intercourse or being in love with someone. And now you have to take a photo in somebody, being of the opposite sex, your brain's kind of confused. I'm like, wait, you know, what is going on here now? So I think, I think a lot of the times the stuff does get confused, and I don't, I don't pay it no mind. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say to you, oh, I don't recognize it right now, but I don't act on things like that. So it's, it's my responsibility to, to allow as much comfort, but also not too much. Then people assume the wrong thing. Yeah. So what is the most common assumption you hear about? Like that's just a few of my people always ask me are you married? And do you think he's faithful? So like but obviously there are some yeah. like questions to answer. Yeah. Okay, even even in terms of that, right? Um, so a lot of people they, a lot of people actually ask me like, hey Paula, even like let's say close conversation with my friends. Because you think people say me, I'll be able to your job, your 
So you know, as I said to you, my wife was there in the beginning when I started tattooing. She understood that whole, how to say that, the way it works. And also, again, I look at things from both sides of, 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 the, of, the, of the lens, can I say. Would I want to walk home one day and find my life for somebody else? Not going to be nice. So why should I disrespect it so much that I'll do that? You know, talking here, flirting here and there, whatever, cool. But actually physically going to be with somebody else. Why are you with somebody? Like, I don't agree with this. If I wanted to be with somebody else, I'd go to my wife and tell her, listen, I don't think we're working. I want to be with somebody else. I think, and it's something she even told me. She's like, why would people do this? Like, why can't you, if you don't want to be with that person, you want to be with that one, then do that. So for me, it's easy to say a man got needs or, you know, hey, this was it. Like, I didn't think because of, no, so this thing doesn't work based on, on just my perception. It's like, oh, because you took the top of, top of in front of it means I want to not sleep with you. That means you okay with it. And then it just happened, oh, I'm sorry, and we'll go back to my wife. No, it doesn't work like that. We got the responsibility. And it's something that I like to install, even in my son and, and other, other men in general. It's like, it's so easy to be unfaithful because so many people it's actually become a chain now. Like I, I hear so many stories of, right now, this is a bit weird. Um, so it's my responsibility to number one, be true to myself in that regard, and understand that I'm the one who proposed and wanted to be married. So therefore, I'm not gonna just say, okay, I'm not married anymore. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna be with somebody else. And it's even worse, like, okay, I'm gonna go do it behind my wife's back and come back and pretend like nothing's happening. Because then you now, you're ducking, you're erratic, you're worried about, oh my gosh, you can to my phone, what you gonna That, I, I can't, I'm, it's, it's hard enough keeping up, up with my wife. What's that, what's that too? Now I'm still have to be hiding people. No, not, not, not for me. So, in that sense, yeah. What people come to us with assumptions about me, That's the in, my, in, yeah. my, in my, in my, in my thing that, Number one, I'm cocky. Um, I'm a, okay, that, that is true, I'm a show off. But they take it in the wrong way. That I'm a sore loser. So I'm very, I'm very competitive, right? But my competitiveness, I wouldn't say that I, I, I can't accept like somebody's better than me. I actually accept that very well. My gift in life is that when somebody's better than me, Comes almost a challenge of because they're better than me. Boy, you know, if they can do it, why can't I do it? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to back that up. So I will always want to be the best, and some people will become, oh, you think you're the best. You, know, you, you copy. No, but I'm literally, because someone's better than me, I'll accept it and I'll grow from it and I'll get better and better. So for me to sit back and, and just be like, oh, yeah, they're better than me, it's fine. No. That's why it goes, oh, 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 Paul is the best. When I hear the dentist, like, oh, Okay, then it's hot. Then it sounds weird because like, yeah. they're saying something to me that I feel I'm not. But in terms of, of pushing myself towards it, I, I always and I always want to get to a different level of, of where I am. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. For having me here, I and for answering all my questions. Is there anything that you'd like to say? That we haven't already said. Wow. <laughs> no, nothing coming out soon. To okay, so as I said, um, I'm going with, with, with what, I, what I intended to from the beginning, so I will be launching a bit of a, of a clothing line. I, I don't want to say that a clothing line doesn't mean I'm stuck to one thing. I want to do a whole lot of everything. So just, just prepare for some merchandise stuff. There's, okay. there's a lot of stuff that, that I've got coming. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe That's some little gift that you can unbox also, right? Oh, that yeah. would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Influencer. Yeah. Influencer, yeah. Okay, guys, thank you. And